this is my 155th episode. That's right, my 150. Oh, I fucked up the microphone over here. There it is. I love my crew. Hold on, I gotta put on my glasses. When I don't have my glasses on, I can't do shit. And I have a major director on my show right now. And there it is. Okay, so we're live. We're happening. We're ready to have some fun. Um, came down the basement tonight, not only to have some fun, but I always wanted to bring this special guest who's going to be on my show for the next 40 minutes before we actually watch the debates on television. This is Mario Cerrito. Thank you so much for coming Thanks down. For having me, We're going to get real with you and chat with you Absolutely. in a little bit. But right now, we want to just do a little bit of a what I call the Hey Marino rant. Because obviously there's a lot of bullshit that's going on in the world today. A ton of it. And uh, not everybody's happy. And what's really going to settle that? Is it going to be the debate that's going to happen on television tonight? No. I'm really, really not sure. All I know is if I was part of the debate tonight, right. I would say, hey, listen, may the best man win. Good luck to you. Just like that. You take care of what you need to say. I'll take care of what I got to say, and we'll make that happen, and that's the way I want exactly. to have a debate. Because I'm Italian. I'm from an Italian family. If somebody makes fun so of me I. while we're so being I. debated, I'm going to crack you right in that's the fucking head. Cut your head off. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. It's just such yeah. bullshit. I'm play that. So, needless to say, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. To watch. I mean, absolutely. I, 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 all I know is we're, we're going to do this. Till about 8.40. We got sandwiches. We got beer. Got I don't know what show is going to be better. This show or the one that we're going to watch upstairs when we go upstairs from my mother's basement to uh, see what's going on with the debates. I mean, I really do feel like they shouldn't be fighting. Nah, man. It's not a boxing match. I agree. It's two I guys agree. saying, how can you help the world? Yeah, and uh, I don't think either of them can at this point. All right, well... Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in on the show tonight. We're actually going to take questions after about 20 minutes of broadcasting. We're going to talk with my friend Mario for a little while. Then we're going to take some questions because I think a lot of people are going to have the same questions that I have to ask a film director who, let's say for right now, specializes in horror. Yes, and so we do. all love horror. So. Yes. Mario, yes. thank you so much for coming down. Absolutely, today. I appreciate nice it. Nice to man. see you. We've been talking, you and I, on years, the internet years. for a while. Yeah. Trying to get together and hang out. Together. It never happened. Nah, it never happened. But hey, we made it happen tonight, right? Well, it happened, Nothing you know. Counts. I guess, in a way, because of the pandemic, my tour slowed down. Right. And uh, yeah. I'm spending more time here in the basement in, in New Jersey. You're in Jersey. That's where I'm and, at. So uh, we made it happen. I saw on the internet you got some interesting go things yeah, going on. Yeah. So now before we get into your career and what you got sure. going on and what you're doing, seriously, I mean, we're going to watch the debate. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of food from my sponsor, which we're going to talk about. Right. And, I mean, what do you think? Uh, I'm not a fan, man, to be honest with you. Um, I think, uh, um, you know, they're both goofy, to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally into politics. Um, I do have my political opinions and my uh, thoughts, but I just think uh, they're both out of control. Both yeah. of them. I really do think that. So, But do you feel that they actually should dog each other like, you know? Yeah, two, absolutely. Two I think the strongest fighters. man should dog the other man, and whoever wins, wins. <laughs> and, and, you know, make somebody look like a fool if you got I don't them. know. I kind you know, of that's think what they, I would do. they should shake hands and say, let's do what's yeah. best for the world, not just each other's ego. Exactly. And I agree, but, you know, I know if it was me debating somebody, I'm ripping your head off. Yeah, well. There's no mercy. Well, that's gonna, a fight. You're going to try and make me look like a fool, I'm going to make you look like a fool. So that's, then that's what they do, so. Imagine it came down to it, they had to put boxing gloves on. Oh, my God, could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> they wouldn't make weight. Then, then the vice presidents and the vice president's elect come running in. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> they wouldn't make weight. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, when, uh, I remember a long time ago. I found out, and I think I talked to you about this. I talked yeah, to a couple right. different people out, but Jerry Cooney yeah. lives in Fanwood. Right. And I want to have him on the show. But I remember when he fought Mike Tyson, and we went to the Meadowlands to see it, and we were all supposed to stay in a certain area and oh, watch geez. it on a screen. It was right. up on a screen. Right. And all of a sudden, as soon as the bell rang, thousands of people ran onto the lawn and yeah. just watched it up close. Oh, my God. And then the Great White Hope... Uh, well, he didn't succeed, but he's still Jerry Cooney, and he lives nearby, and he'd be great to have on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. 
That'd be a nice one. Yeah. All right, so tell us the story of your life. Now, we have a, right. I haven't had a film director on the show. Right. I've had comedians. I've had some writers and producers and stuff like that, right. fellow fellow actors, a couple guys that are in some of the shows that I'm in. First film director? I think so. I feel honored. I think so. I feel honored, man. Maybe I had a director. I, I really don't know. The Maybe majority not a horror of... director. All right. Yeah, there we go. It. Now yeah, now I'm the first. Uh, well, you're not specifically nah, just nah. going to do horror, right? No, nah, I can do anything. I've done a love film, so you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm more or less going the horror route right now um, just because that is my favorite. And that's the most, um, you know, easy to do right now uh, with money and all that. So yeah, yeah, wow. You know what I mean? You can make a good money. project. Yeah, absolutely. You can make a good project uh, fairly cheap for horror. Whereas if you do something like an action film, you need millions of dollars. You know right. I mean? So horrors where you, my wheelhouse really. So. All right. So take us to the yeah, beginning. I'll take you, it to you're, the beginning. You're young. You're coming yeah. up. You want to be handsome. a film director, writer. Well, okay. You threw in handsome. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll take you to the beginning of it. How it all started for me. So um, I was never into film. Uh, I was an athlete in high school. Um, so you know, after that, I was looking for something you know to keep myself occupied. I wrote a screenplay in 2007, um, and I uh, I didn't know what to do with it because I didn't have any connections in the industry. So I put it away. And my wife, now, my, my now wife, I met her in 2011. She actually found it in my closet and she read it. She goes, this is really good. You should try and get this made. And I said, get it made. I don't know anybody in the business or anything. I don't know any film lingo, nothing. So um, I went out on Facebook and I started researching just like everybody does today. You know what I mean? Try and network and all that. And I connected with a uh, producer. He kind of trained me a little bit. We had a fallen out, but I took the knowledge that he gave me. And I said, you know what? I might be able to do this myself. So I wrote a screenplay. Uh, and I, it was, I put, put a budget of about ten grand on it, got two investors behind it for like 5000 each, and I uh, made it, and that's where it got my start. That was 2013. That got signed to like worldwide distribution. It was released on cable television, all the major uh, video-on-demand platforms. So what was the name of this show? Deadly Gamble. Deadly, Deadly Gamble. Deadly Gamble, yeah. It's about a degenerate gambler that's into the Russian mafia, and he risks his family's lives, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, good, like a thriller action. It's thriller, horror. It's got those elements. And that's what led to my second movie called The Listing. I did that on a twenty-five thousand dollars budget. Now these are small budgets, you know. What I mean? Yeah. Twenty-five grand on a movie. It's costing me twenty-five thousand dollars to do this broadcast. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Twenty-five <laughs> grand for a movie. I mean, Hollywood, they that's like uh, a lunch for these guys. You know what I mean? So to us to make a movie on twenty-five grand. Now this is in 2015. So I got that one done. That one. That one's actually I got the DVD. It's called The Listing. Um, that was released uh, worldwide as well. Uh, it's a thriller, horror thriller, um, and that one uh, actually landed in the stores, on the on the uh, shelves of stores, which was always a dream of mine. There you go, the listing. And That's, that's a super, cool. Yeah, that's a cool movie, really cool movie. Um, and that was in 2015, and that just it kept going from there, man. And then I started getting, uh, you know, like building a little name for myself. And Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That, that is creepy. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to do anybody. Uh, yeah, so you're going to do justice, about... but let's see if I can't show it. Yeah, that's uh... that's a pretty scary looking dude. Yeah, yeah, it's about a kidnapping, a guy that gets his son kidnapped, and uh, he has to get, get him back at any cost. So, all right. So this this film's called The Listing, a right. film by Mario Cerrito the Third, and it says six bodies, twenty four hours, life or death. Correct. Who is this actor? Bernard Glinkowski, he's the owner of the Philadelphia Acting Studio. Great guy, great actor, and just an overall good dude. Oh, wow. Well, it kind of looks yeah. familiar. I, yeah. can't, I can't place the face. And on the back is some really creepy shit. Yeah, man. That's a, it's, a, it's a really good suspense thriller. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, it's, uh, it's out in stores. So, so the first film that you did was a, uh, a short, and this is a full-length no, feature? No, they're both features. Deadly oh. Gamble's a feature, too. I did that on $10,000. You made like, a feature with 10, 10 grand. grand? 10 grand. And it, it got worldwide distribution. It was did on cable television and all. Did you do it over weekends? Yeah, actually. No, we did, shit. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday and Sundays we had. How long did uh, you make? Two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it took about two years. Nah, but... Uh, but you know what you do? You got it. Like when you're first starting out and you don't have any contacts or anything, what do you do? You know, I didn't have any money. I was a young kid. Uh, you know what I mean? I was just getting out of my parents' basement. Yeah. Uh, the, you I'm know, still in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> to give you a little plug there. I ain't leaving yeah, safe down here. You know? But, uh, you know, I had no money in my pocket. I had a screenplay, a dream, and I made it happen. And that's kind of where my career, now I'm making a living doing what I'm doing. Probably. Well, hot damn. So this is yeah. all you do. This is all I do. All right. So yeah. 
Then the listing, what's the next project? Uh, the one I think Human you Human Hibachi. That one. That, uh, the one you're doing the signing? No, that uh, this is, the listing is the one I did the signing for in Barnes & Noble's, the one I just showed you. That, right. That had a DVD release through Barnes & Noble's Target, all the big, you know, major retail stores. Then I did Human Hibachi in 2018, which is straight horror. I mean, this is like uh, Gore Central. I mean, it's uh, it's about humans being served up to cannibals. They're, they think they're going to a restaurant to eat, and well, it's human, crazy. Human hibachi, human hibachi. I'm thinking yeah, some, can, some dudes getting right. cooked. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Cooking, live, eating live people. It's just, it's who gross. Wrote, who wrote I human, wrote and directed that. Wrote? Yeah, yeah, that one's getting a big well, following. Let me ask you a question. Now, you, you write a feature like that. Yeah. Does your wife read it? Yeah, my wife's my number one fan, so right. she reads everything I do. She critiques everything I do. She, yeah. I know, but you, you're talking to a comedian here. So now <laughs> she writes human hibachi. She reads human hibachi. Yeah, yeah. Hibachi. Right. And then she looks at you like, honey, you don't plan on eating. Eat. Yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> she goes to sleep next to me still. Yeah, no, she uh, she she thinks I'm sick sometimes, but she's all... Human hibachi. Your yeah. wife's sleeping next to you. She must thinking she's going to wake up a brajol. Right, exactly. That's what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Brajol. Some Italian <laughs> women are brajols no matter what. But you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> But no, no, but you would think that some some wives would think, think that, run. that's creepy. Absolutely, that's some well, creepy that's shit. That's why I married her because she knows she knows how to separate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's good that way. But absolutely, Mike. You know, it is creepy, and uh, yeah, that comes out in October. Uh, it's going to be uh, on Amazon Prime and all that. So, so you got yourself on Amazon Prime with Human Hibachi. Hibachi. Yes. Yes. Did they call it HH when you were working on it? Yeah, no, but yeah that's <laughs> really? what everybody called it. You're yeah, working yeah. on HH. HH. HH, yep. So, so what is what is it about? Uh, so it's basically about this guy that kidnaps his girlfriend. Or she he sets her up. It's her birthday party. He's, it's actually shot all on an iPhone, this film, this movie. I wanted to look uh, found footage style. Remember like Blair Witch Project? Yeah. You see that one? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to look real. So he's filming her uh, birthday extravaganza all the way up until he takes her to this restaurant. And at this restaurant is where he's basically setting her up to be killed for money. He's getting paid off by the restaurant owners who are feeding these rich cannibals that pay money to eat humans. So, his, you know, we're documenting his girlfriend's birthday until the point she's killed, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. But So there's, there's, there's no real history in this. It's no. not. You made it up, right? I made All it right. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say I, I didn't actually that... experience in real life. But, hate to think there's a place where they cook people and eat them. Well, there, I think there is. Well, but not in New Jersey. Not, I was going to say not in Jersey. Seriously, they, they, they cook people, but they don't eat them. They right, just cook exactly. them so that they, they get rid of them. They get disappear. That's what yeah. I'm gonna say. Yeah, you, they get rid of them. They don't know okay, where they so go. Okay, so this this brings my mind to a trivia. Yeah. What movie was a horror movie that they actually did cook the people and eat them? Horror. Uh, he knows. You could say it. The plane that crashed. We have uh, our sponsor Johnny Salami is here. <laughs> His real name is Salami, Johnny Salami, and he's thinking, the plane that crashed. But I know what you're thinking about, but that was not a horror movie. That was based on a true story where the, the athletes crashed and a bunch of them died. They got so hungry, they went out into the snow and started eating each other. That's right. No, I'm looking at a looking for a horror that actually was made movie? back in the day. No, they when people died, instead of burying them, they cooked them and put it into a formula, uh -huh. and you ate that formula. I'll give you a hint, Charlton Heston. Soylent Green was said from the audience member. There you go. Yes, Soylent Green. You remember at the end of the movie, and he's going like this. Soylent Green is made from people. <laughs> from people. What a great movie. I have not seen it. Yeah, well, it's old. Yeah, it probably it's wasn't even my that time. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I saw it on a rerun or some shit like that. But um, I think one of the fantastic, one of the most fantastic movies, now that I'm thinking of Charlton Heston, was Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Did you see Planet of the yeah, Apes? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the first one, when he comes to the end of the movie, and he goes, what do you think he's going to find out there? His destiny. <laughs> and then he sees the Statue of Liberty all jacked up. Yeah, no. That's, that was that's a, a great, great movie. Yeah. So if you had your uh, favorite horror movie, what would it be? Uh, mm, so I got probably a tie between Halloween, the original Halloween is where I get a lot of inspiration, and uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. They're probably my oh, two yeah. favorites, yeah. Which leads me into what I'm, I actually am working with the guy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, he did the uh, sequel to it. So that was a big break. In well, life. let's bring that to yeah, the uh, yeah. forefront now. Yeah. This is the guy. He found you. You found him. I found him. Uh, so I went to New Jersey Horror Con, which is uh, in Atlantic City. Um, I had Human Hibachi down there. Like I had a table set up like for promotion. 
And uh, he was there signing autographs. He's like one of the uh, guest hosts or whatever. Was, you know, they had him in there signing autographs. So I went up to him. His name's Mick Strawn. And I said, hey, Mick. I said, how you doing? I said, you know, I got a screenplay. I want to send it to you. Right? So I'm just off the cuff. And, you know, this guy's not going to talk. And whatever. This guy's done work for Wes Craven. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the godfather of horror. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He was a production designer. He's the big time. We yeah. love you, buddy. We think yeah. you're great. Exactly. He was a production <laughs> designer on Nightmare on Elm Street, on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the things that I love. So, you know, I go up to him and I say, you know, I'm going to send you a screenplay. So I connected with him on Facebook. I sent him the screenplay. It's called The House in the Pines. I just got done writing it over the pandemic. I had a lot of downtime. Sent it to him. Didn't think I'd hear back from him. Hear back from him. He goes, you know what? He goes, I like this so much, I want to direct it. So now I'm like, oh, now we're in. Because now, listen. I love directing film, but I'd rather have somebody else direct the screenplay that I write because directing is a lot of stress. You know what I mean? And, and it really is. It's a lot of stress. So uh, he's going to direct the movie, and uh, we're in pre-production on that right now. And that was that was a nice little break for me because now, you know, this guy's uh, got a lot of connections in Hollywood and all that. So, yeah. So you step back. You say, you know what? This guy's got a track record for Correct. making legendary Correct. movies. Yes. He wants to direct it. You're going to step back as writer. Writer, producer. 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 Yes, yes. And that's just really, really dynamite. And that's dynamite because now, you know, I can use his brain with, you know, he's done the best of the best and put him on that. And then I take a step back and act as the producer and the writer, which is right. what I've always wanted to do. I, I directed out of necessity because, you know, I had to get films made to make a name for myself. And if I were at the early stages on, like, Deadly Gamble on the listing, if I were to pay directors, it would have blown my budget. So I had to get in and direct it. So, you know, I learned to be a good director, but I'd rather just write and produce. Right. Yeah. So. Now, that's fantastic. Thank I you. mean, that's a blessing. And you had the yeah. balls to go over to him and say, hey, listen, man. I got a screenplay, man. I'm coming up, and you're yeah. on your way over there. And exactly. Would you please take a look at this? Exactly. And, you know, the, the bottom line is, who doesn't love a horror movie? I mean, dude, I, I love them, especially around this time of the year. Yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? We're heading into Halloween. We're heading into Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? Halloween is a time where we're always supposed to scare the shit out of each right. other. I want to say that my favorite scary movie, I don't think anybody can beat, because I love getting scared. I hope that I'm going to get scared. I pay money saying, please, scare the bejesus out What's of me. That? But nothing's scarier than The Exorcist. Yeah, that's no actually way. my mother's favorite movie. No way. You, I can't watch that movie yeah. at my age now and that's sleep a great, alone. That's a great film. And, uh, yeah, my mom's favorite part of that movie is when she's spitting that green stuff out of her oh. mouth. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. That, that, she always brings that up. That's her favorite movie. Um, if you recall in your mind The Exorcist and that lady walks up right. the top of those stairs and that music starts playing yeah. and you hear the na that, it's, it's, that doesn't grumbling leave your mind. sound, you're fucking petrified. Yeah, don't leave your mind. Then the door opens, she, she turns her head around mm -hmm. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. mother of God. That's a great movie, but yeah. That's your favorite? Or? I would say that's the all-time scariest The one movie. that's stuck in your head the most. I so yeah, can't yeah. watch it. I'll never watch it. While I'm talking yeah. about it right now, I can still you, see that kid's and Mike, fucking head. They've done so many remakes of it, and you just can't compete with the original. That's right. Yeah, you really just can't. Isn't that and amazing? I, I, hate the, I hate... Listen, I... When they do that and they just are not even close to the original, you know, unless it's like a franchise like Freddy and all that, like that's all the same. Saw creators. franchise, I don't even know if that's hard. It is, yeah. But the Saw franchise, I'm is a great. fan of that. Yeah, um, I like the Saw franchise. Saw's good. Um, which actually, Human Hibachi got a plug to saying it's like Saw mixed with another film. That, that's the kind of film Human Hibachi is. It's like a gore, gore, gore hounds would like that. People that like blood and guts and that's that's kind of goofy, but. No, I like I'm it. Into I like it, man. it all. Yeah, I want to yeah. see somebody get slashed, chopped, kicked yeah. in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like the uh, the devil. Yeah, right. No, Salem's Lot. Do you remember Salem's King? Lot? I guess it was Stephen yeah, King. Stephen King's book. Yeah. Bow to the master. Right. And the kids got, uh, the, the creatures got that skull face. Yeah. That uh, looked like the original Dracula who was, uh, what's the name? Uh, I don't know who that would be. Master Domus, Master Domus, House of Domus, Master Domus. What's his name? Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Nosferatu, yes. Yeah, remember that? Yes. That's some scary shit. You're smart, this guy. Yes. The quiet but <laughs> the silent, deadly yeah, partner yeah, guy yeah. over there. He gets all of this shit. But that is some scary, scary shit. So you're into more like supernatural devil, like the p possession, yes. possession. Possession. Film. So so do you like the new ones? Um, uh, t -t 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 -t. Oh, what the hell was that? Um, Insidious. Did you see that? So I like Insidious. Yeah. Didn't scare me enough. Right. I like the one when the girl with the long black hair comes out of the well and she crawls around on the ceiling. Yeah, uh, oh, The Grudge. 
the grudge. Yeah, yeah, that's grudge. cool. I always, yeah, but see um, now they got too many creatures rolling yeah, around on yeah. the ceiling. What's it's the, been um, done. I also like it though when the clowns in oh, the. That's that's, in a, the, that's actually one of my favorites. The clown too. is in the war. Uh, the original. Well, the original two with. Uh, you saw the new one. I saw the new yeah, one. Yeah, the, the new first one, yeah. one was good. The second one sucked. Yeah. The first one when the kid sticks his arm in the sewer. Oh, he pulls him right in. And he eats it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was yeah, some yeah. scary shit. My son's been getting into all that now. He's four years old, right? It's, so too, I, it's, listen, it's too young. It's too young. That's what I told him. I'm like, you can't be watching this. He, he's into it, though. He, we went into a Halloween store, okay? And the kid's like, now he's obsessed with it. I don't know if it came from me into him, but he's four years old, and he wants to, you know, I'm like, oh, my God. Stay innocent, kid. Well, here's a scary movie, too, that I think you'll appreciate when I, when I throw this one out there. They rerun it on airplanes all the time. And before the pandemic, when I was traveling so right. much, I always just watched a few different scenes in this movie all the time, basically because I wanted to get down the dialogue mm -hmm. and I wanted to impersonate the people in the movie because that's what started me out as an actor. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to impersonate people. Right, right, right. And uh, that would be The Shining. One of my favorites. The Shining. I, the original. Now, they made another one. It was like a TV movie. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Didn't but the it. one with Jack Nicholson, uh, dude, one of my favorite films. Which What scenes were you imitating? One of One of my favorite scenes in The Shining is when he bumps into the waiter and he says, let me get that off of you. And he takes him into the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, and he's talking to him. And he's yeah, talking yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite films. But they're both so he, damn he keeps, good. What do you keep saying? You are the caretaker? Yes. He keeps telling him you're the caretaker. Yes. Like, what are you talking about? No. Nah. When he goes like this, you uh, chopped up your wife and yeah, your yeah. little kids into bits. And he's like. And he goes like this, I beg to differ, sir. Yeah. Dude, dude that movie. See, I, I, I can't believe I didn't mention that. I get inspiration from that movie as well. Well, that actor from England who played that character I saw at a gym in North Hollywood oh, no one shit. day and he was in a gym shorts and gym st and he goes walking in the gym and I went shining yeah and he goes wow, wow. you recognize you're, you're, me I'm like yeah, yeah. he must have been a lot older when you seen him right yes yeah yeah because he but, was he was like middle-aged then I would say he was like, like 40s? 40s yeah right when yeah. he did yeah, that yeah, role. He was like 40 yeah but he was so good the way he stood up with Jack Nicholson oh, especially yeah. when he said uh I think your son needs a bit of a talking to, perhaps a little bit more. Yep. If I the, may be so bold, son. Wanted to beat him. <laughs> oh, my God. And, that, and the way Jack Nicholson looked at him. Yeah. You yeah, could see, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. my God, he's oh, going to kill he's the gonna, kid. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> Danny's getting whipped. Danny, yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, that kid only did one movie. Yeah, that was it. One and done. That was it. I checked his IMDb. <laughs> he only did the one, and that was it. I don't. Isn't that's that the weirdest something? thing, isn't it? That was an unbelievably... Well, Stephen scary. King is... Yeah. He's one of my favorites. I actually did a Stephen King movie, now that I think about it. Oh, you did? He did a movie called Lucky Quarter, and I only had maybe two lines. I was hey, the croupier in a... Um, casino? A casino right. in Vegas. I was the croupier. What does he do? Um, uh, the, like a craps? Or... Not craps. Roulette. 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 I yeah. didn't meet Stephen King. What, they make you spin the wheel with the ball? I spun the wheel yeah. and I... I <laughs> Set a couple lines out? You kept... No more bets. That yeah. was my line. No, no more, more bets. bets. That's cool. Though. I practiced for months. No more bets. Yeah, you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get killed or nothing. Yeah. But, um... That's cool, yeah. bro. Hey, man, you're in a Stephen King movie. And like what I was telling you before, yeah. I like that character that was walking on the ship in Alien. Right. And the water, was, the water dripping was dripping down. down. Right, Great yeah. character actor, that guy. He passed away. Not too long ago, he's been in a lot of movies. And when um, he was looking for Jonesy the cat, right. that was creepy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier. That was some creepy, so. I love it. A lot of horror movies. Big horror fan, man. So. I didn't think the Blair Witch Project was all that great, but now, I will tell, tell you, you now, that. that's something to consider doing. Hey, Make listen, your money. Uh, I was just going to say, so they made that film on an estimated, they want to say ten to $30,000. And I think it made close to two hundred million dollars. <throat> I'm is, wrong. That's insane. Okay. And the reason why is because they uh, it was all marketing. So people actually believed that was real. People thought that movie was real. And I remember I did. I was uh, maybe sixteen, seventeen when that came out. You mean it wasn't real? I don't think no, so. Am I giving it away? Maybe I'm spoiling it for him. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> I, <laughs> damn it! Did you think it was real the whole time, Mike? I don't know. I don't know. Nah, I. Uh, yeah, but no, like, uh, <laughs> dude, I mean, it literally made $200 million, so. That's what every filmmaker's trying to replicate in horror, but nobody can. Well, so. you're going to do it. I'm going to do yeah, it. Human Hibachi. Human Hibachi.
Yeah. Um, we're going to take some questions now. If anybody has any questions for Mario or myself, we'd love to read a, a few questions. Absolutely. Maybe you want to tell us what your favorite movie is. We're also going to tell you where you can find Mario's work. Yes. And uh, maybe you can um, go to his Facebook and his YouTube channel and all his yeah, social media all. so that he'll keep you posted as to where you can see the listening the hibachi and yeah and the I listing got, i got the, the the house in the pines i'm working on i got a poker documentary i'm working on all kinds of stuff yes well that's great yeah the house in the pines that's what you call it the house in the pines yeah. house in the pines mm -hmm. is going to be fantastic yes it is so let's see here's some questions right now next you will say brigantine castle wasn't real that's not a question do you guys watch a ghost adventures i never heard of it do you like Phantasm? I remember Phantasm. Yeah. You remember Phantasm yeah. with the little ball? Yes. You know you what? We said Phantasm was one scary ass movie. Right now, if we were to watch Phantasm, we'd think it's stupid. Yeah, but it was. But great. if you watched it when we were kids, yeah, yeah. it was petrifying. Do you guys watch Ghost Adventures? Um, Must have been a TV show. I was actually on Ghost Nation with Jason Hall's. Uh, my house was on that. I didn't even mention that. Oh, um, is that right? In October, yeah, the Travel Channel came and filmed that at our house, uh, Pam. So, yeah, my house is actually haunted, believe it or not. You live in a haunted house? Yeah. Oh, it came, the Travel great. Channel came, and uh, they actually solved the mystery, though. Isn't that crazy? How do you crowdsource at Mr. Direct? <laughs> he's upstairs. I don't know why he's not coming down. It's uh, Markley. Mr. Direct? Yeah. Oh, He's yeah, the yeah, comedian. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, upstairs. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. But, um... How do you actually get started? Like uh, now that this gentleman found uh, your work and they want to do the film with you, so, when's the, the, let's say, shoot date? Okay, so, you know, you got to do pre-production, which is usually about six months. Uh, you got to cast, you got to, but the, the first thing where we're at right now is getting all contracts signed. So I got to get the director signed. I got to get the producer signed. I got to get all kinds of uh, NDAs, non-disclosures, all that. Got to get all that out of the way. And then you go and um, cast. That'd be the next thing, casting. And then uh, you go location scouting, get your locations, and then you uh, then you get the money. So where is this the locations for Jersey? This, uh, We're oh, yeah. in the Pine Barrens. Pine yeah, Barrens. Yeah, because it's you know what I mean. I want to. I utilize it's my state a lot, so. We're going to go to uh, the Pine Barrens. I now. like that. Keep it in the state, state of New Jersey. Yeah. We need to make some films here. We got to get you in it. I'm ready to play a role in a scary we gotta, movie. We got to get. We, we got to figure it out. But I think oh no, man! I've been a nice. I want to be a killer. You want to be a, a murderer? <laughs> I'll play a, a guy in drag. Who there kills people? I think I'm going to be getting some notes here. The Blair Witch Project budget was sixty thousand dollars. Worldwide gross two hundred and fifty million dollars. Insanity. Yep. That's insane. We got a Google expert. Sixty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> that is the Jersey Devil. Yeah. I do remember the Jersey Devil. Yeah. I think it still exists. I don't know whether that was like a, a fable or it's real. Are you in need of sure? Yeah, that nah, don't say that. Thank you very much, Sonny. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, the Jersey. So. The Jersey Devil. I know there was a film shot at Batstow. Something about. Batstow Village is in South Jersey. Um, there was something about the Jersey Devil. That's in the Pine Barns. Have you ever heard of the Pat Batstow? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to be great because you'll be up there filming and uh, half the crew will be scared to death that's already it. before that's you it, even man. get up there. Um, I think I was telling you, I don't know if it's a haunted house or not, but mm -hmm. uh, around the corner yeah, you're saying, from yeah. here, Pat Denizio, who was the lead singer of the Smithereens, right. lived with his mom in a house that was built in the late 1800s, and I've been in there several times. The memorabilia this guy Is had right? was unbelievable. It had to have been worth millions of dollars. Really? But the old lady had to go. He since passed, and they're going to knock it down. I'd give anything to just go in there and film because right, it right. looks like the creepiest Oldest down the street? house. Yeah, it's in wow. walking distance. I walk by it every day yeah. on my way to take a morning walk here in Scotch Plains, and I, I like to take pictures of it, video. I was friends with right, uh, the, Pat. The guy, so yeah. It's really, really That's sad. That's pretty cool. But uh, if anybody else has any more questions while we're doing the question and answer portion of the show, now would be a good time. Thank you, everybody, for writing in on Instagram, and thank you so much, everybody, for writing in here on Facebook. Remember, you can keep on watching this show. It's going to stay here forever. Where do you think the best scary Halloween location, like a hayride in New Jersey or PA, is? I can is? answer that. There you go. So, um, I would say, so I filmed at a place uh, called Creamy Acres. It's in way South Jersey. It's in Mullica Hill. Um, I did a little short film there. It's 
great location. It's in the cornfields of like the dude. It's like out in the middle of nowhere. Cornfields, barns, animals. So that was in uh, Mullica Hill. It's called Creamy Acres. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of different places. Hopefully this year we can actually go to a hayride or a haunted yeah, mansion. Hopefully the kids get to go out and trick or treat. I already bought my you're candy ready to go. over you're, you're... at Walmart, and I got yeah. my bowls, and I got my <laughs> Crunch and Baby Ruth and Butterfingers and Jeepers Creepers. You're right, that was a scary movie too. And Faces, Faces of, death. of Death. Yes. You know what's funny? You say Faces of Death. Uh, I'm almost positive that Human Hibachi in one of the reviews I got was compared to that as well. I'm pretty sure. Almost positive. But that's a good one. Yeah, remember Faces of yeah, Death? And it scared one. the shit out of you because they said it was all based on real stuff. Right, right. And that's So that now now I know for a fact that's what Human Hibachi was compared yeah. to. Yeah. You know what's cool too, even about like The Exorcist, because they said it was based on real life happenings. Yeah, and it scares you twice as name? much. Uh, Reagan. Reagan. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Then I made Emily Rose. Yeah. That one. The Carrie. First one. Yeah. That's... John Travolta. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the movie? Isn't that Carrie? crazy he was in that? Yeah. Think that? Like, that's so out of his John Travolta. That's just like so out of his, like. Yeah, that's just like so out of what he does. Traces of death. Right. Hey, one by one podcast. How you doing, man? It's nice to see you. I want to talk to you this week. Thank you so much for writing into the show. Um, that's right. Faces of death. Carrie's a good one. Tra Carrie. Carrie's a really good one. Um, probably uh, in my top 20, Carrie. The original. Yeah. Yeah, remakes remake. they never remake, do it. They remake them, and it's just, it's not the same. You know what? You can even go back to the Twilight Zone and find something really scary, but it really wasn't. Yeah, but Alfred Hitchcock. at the Hitchcock. time, it would. How, Alfred Hitchcock. He's got good ones. Birds. Birds. Psycho. What was the, Psycho. What was the one at the end? The very end. Your yeah, Psycho was at the Psycho's. end, but also, but the baby was in the... Did but the baby that? was in the... Uh, I have not in seen the crib. Death Proof. Have you seen that Death Proof? I don't know what Death Proof no. is. Rosemary's baby, three for three. He's a good three plug. Three for three. This Bill guy. came up. Thank God he came up. He's the man. I mean, he didn't even write two hundred fifty million. He wrote the exact number. Yeah, two hundred forty-eight million. With that, right off million, Wikipedia, right? I think. <laughs> can you believe that, though? Folks, give us sixty thousand dollars so we can make two hundred and fifty million. We'll do it. Yes. Then you can all come on the podcast. And <laughs> while you come on my podcast, we actually eat food. The Rob Zombie Halloween. Reimaginings aren't yeah. so bad. Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, yep. we already got it. You're a little late. Rob Zombie's pretty good, believe it or not, which is uh, crazy. And you just, now I think Fred Durst is doing film. Did you see that? The yes. The guy from Limp Biscuit. Yes. I don't know if he's doing horror. I, I'm not sure what he's doing, but I know he's directing. Cujo. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen King. You like that? Yeah. No. No. Uh, There's a, a late night show. I don't know what channel I think it's on MeTV. And they show old scary movies that are really, really bad. Oh, yeah? I forgot what, what that guy's name is. But, uh, it's on MeTV. Thanks, Pam. We appreciate that. Thank you know you, what Pam. else is going to be great about us? We're going to work together, and we're having a lot of fun being down here in the show. Yes, we are. So, and Johnny Salami just came and refreshed, or is going to refresh in, um, Mario's wine. wine. So why don't we talk about one of our sponsors while we're here? Um, you all know me to uh, eat on the show, and we're not going to not eat on tonight's show. So, Mario, if you yeah, don't absolutely. mind, let's bring over these two pieces of a beautiful Thank you, my man. sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I talk all the time. Swamp Thing. We're talking <laughs> about legendary shit Swamp there, thing. Sonny. Swamp Thing. And i got to think of Swamp Thing while I bite this sandwich. Okay. Swamp Thing. Mocha Yeti. Chill. Uh, one of my favorite places to get a nice... Italian sub sandwich or a sub sandwich of any kind is in Nutley, New Jersey, because everybody knows in Nutley, New Jersey, the best restaurants exist. Because there's a lot of Italian people up there. And one of the best places up there is the Hero King. Hero King of Nutley, New Jersey. You can find them at 132 Franklin Avenue in Nutley, New Jersey. Nice. And I tell people all the time call them. Call. Not because you want a sandwich. Not because you want macaroni salad or some kind of crazy soda. Because you want to break Johnny Salami's balls. <laughs> Johnny Salami works at 973-661-3095. Johnny Salami. 
And when you call, order the sandwich number four. The number four sandwich is now the Mike Marino sandwich. You can even order it online at www.theheroking.com. That's theheroking.com. And, and you will order yourself the number four. Say it. Number four. This is the Mike number four. Marino. Now, in the number four, you're going to find not Capricola, but Gabagool. Gabagool. Don't ever say Capricola. If you go to Johnny Gabagool. Salami's place, the Hero King, and you say Capri Cola, somebody yeah, slaps yeah. the shit out of you. <laughs> yes, That's they, right. They kick you out of there. You get out of there. Mario would be so petrified that you said Capri Cola, yeah. he'd make a horror movie about That's it. That's right. You'd become Capri Cola. You be <laughs> <laughs> so in here we got Capri Cola, pressed ham, salami. Yeah, that's good. Looks like a little provolone cheese. Yeah, man. Um, um, dressing. Salad dressing, salad, tomato. Am I missing anything, Johnny Salami? Salad, tomato, salt, pepper, oregano, oil, and vinegar. Look at people writing in. Number four, number four. <laughs> number four. <laughs> number four. All right, here we go. All right. Mm. Oh, fucking A. Mm. That's a good sandwich. If we could go to a commercial break now, we would have went. Yeah, because I'm going to eat it all. We can't. Oh, that's good. Nothing like a scary movie when the guy gets cut in half while he's eating. You know what? How mad would he be? He didn't even get to finish his sandwich. I know. <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> I hated that horror movie. Why? That right. was eating his sandwich. He couldn't wait. You cut him in Let the, the throat. man eat. You open up his throat and his sandwich oh. comes out the throat. That's never been done. That's good. No, that hasn't. That that's that'd be human hibachi too. We'll do that. <laughs> Human abachi. <laughs> we could shoot right there. You should see Johnny Salami's place. Absolutely. You ever go into a restaurant and there's like seating for 100 people? Yeah. When you go in Johnny Salami's, Hero King and Nutley, there's seating for none. None. One up. person walks in, you order, and you get out. That's it. They have a bathroom that your foot's in the closet, your penis is in the toilet, <laughs> and your head and your arm are in the closet. It's unbelievable. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We One talked about favorites. that, Pam. One of my favorites, Pam. That's uh, I say that in a lot of interviews. Uh, Texas Chainsaw. I forgot to say it tonight, but one of my favorites. Um, believe it or not, the original and 2003 uh, with Jessica Biel, I really liked. Um, that's a really good one. Which is a remake. <clears throat> well, we want to say a very, very nice thank you to Johnny Salami. He's here tonight. Thank he you, snuck in. He brought us some wine. He brought us the sandwiches. He brought us macaroni salad. Potato salad, which I love really macaroni good. salad, and I love potato salad. Folks, you got to look them up. Seriously, one of the greatest places to have an authentic hero, mm -hmm. whether you call it hero or a sub sandwich, as long as you don't call it Subway, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank one of our other sponsors who came on board, which is one of my favorite places to get coffee. That's Bada Bean Coffee. Bada Bean Coffee, spelled C-A-W-F-E-E, -E, Bada Bean Coffee. You can get Bada Bean Coffee in the ones that you put in your Keurig. You can get the oh, small good. rolls, the beans. You can get it, whatever you that's want. Great. All you got to do is go to www.badabeancoffee.com and use my promo code MARINO, and you'll get yourself 15% off, and I want you to do that. I also have another sponsor that came on board today, and we're going to be talking about him for the next three months. Because this pizza company has been in business for 50 years. You're talking about great grandpa, grandpa, and then the family. And it keeps on going. Wow. Right now, everybody who works at Regina's Pizza. Do like this. You got this one. Well, I got Regina's there it I got is. the pizza box. There you got the I box. Got the box. sent me I the box. The pizza. There was no pizza in it. But just a box. Regina's the... Pizza of Akron, Ohio has been in business for 50 years. They're doing such great stuff at this place that they're all in Vegas right now. If you know about this, the pizza competition in Vegas was always in the late end of uh, September, the beginning of October. Because of COVID, I don't believe they're having it. So this guy and his friends decided that they're going to go out to Vegas no matter what. And they're going to celebrate the pizza weekend. So a nice big shout out oh, nice. to Regina's Pizza of Akron, Ohio. They're just really, really fantastic. The Catalano family. Nice. www.reginaspizza.com. 
Bigfootpodcast.com. Check them out. I got all kinds of swag from them. This is the shirt that they're enjoying while they're out in Vegas. Oh, I like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 50 years of having fun making pizza and making people happy. So if you're in Akron, Ohio, stop over there. I know he's got a mask here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing's great. He got a mask. Regina's of Akron, Ohio. Look him up on the internet. Don't get crazy. All right? Mm Mm-hmm. And then we got to do another shout out to our friend Al Smith, who's running for mayor here in the town of Scotch Plains. Uh, if you want to vote for Al, call him. Call him. Imagine I gave out his number. <laughs> <laughs> you running for mayor? Who are you? Where'd you get my number? Really? Call Johnny Johnny Salami though. That's really funny. Fuck him up. Yes, it is. Fuck American him. Werewolf in London. Yeah, remember yeah. that? That was the first guy who came yeah. out with the most incredible yeah. makeup and shit. Like yeah, that. I like that. Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, that, the Night of the Living Dead is classic. Night of the Living classic. Dead. Classic. I know That's I have a time. Mike Marino mask for you, but I don't know what I did with it. So, when so everybody... I get boy, sh- boy shorts. Yeah, okay, I'll give you some boy <laughs> shorts. we got to get ready to get going. I wanted to thank all my sponsors for tonight. Seriously, if it wasn't for them, we couldn't be doing what we were doing, and we couldn't be eating all this great food. So thank you, Hero Kings. Thank you, Butter Bean Coffee, and thank you, Regina's Pizza of Akron, Ohio. I'd like to thank my guests for coming down to the basement and having some fun with me, Mario Cerrito. Mario, tell everybody where they could find you and take a look Absolutely. at your work. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm on Facebook at Mario Cerrito, I, 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 which is the third, um, and on Instagram at Mario Cerrito. Is it I, I, I? I, I? Yeah, it's kind or of is how... it one, one, one? No, it's I, Greek I, I, I. letters. It, it, they, it, the way the social media takes it, it's I, I, I. Oh. Yeah. Uh, on uh, Twitter, at Mario Cerrito, and then three, the number. Um, but yeah, you guys can find me there, um, and you can follow me, and I post a lot. So Nothing Thanks. like an Italian guy saying it's okay to follow me. It's all right to follow me. All and right. you can follow me too, folks. You know where to find me. I'm right here on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on everything you could think of. Here's my gift to Mario. He's going to get one of these masks. We have brand new packaged ones upstairs. They come in black, but you can get them in white or black at MikeMarino.net. This thing's awesome. You take that. We still have some panties that said get the bat on the ass. <laughs> and if you get heavy and heavy and you keep on going to Hero Kings of Nutley, it says awesome. Gabagool number four. I love this mask. We also have shirts that say Marino 2020 as I'm running for president of the United States. You can get yours. There's a limited edition at MikeMarino.net. And definitely go to my YouTube channel and subscribe at Mike Marino Live on all social media. So we thank you so much. And you can also find me on ItalianAmericanRadio.com, DDVRadio.com, iTunes, Google, Spotify, Anchor, and all that crazy shit. And you can ask me any question you want. Just say, hey, Marino, I got a question. Well, we got to get going. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you. Remember, let's make America Italian again. You don't know let's nothing. Do you didn't see nothing. You don't say nothing. And how do I end every single one of my broadcasts by always saying the same thing? Don't take no shit from, like you say with me, don't, don't take, take no, no shit, shit from nobody. nobody. Good night. Nice. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying watching my podcast live from my mother's basement. We're having a lot of fun and I'm going to have a lot of great guests on the show in the future. So if you like it, hit like. You could also leave a comment. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch other funny videos. And you could also listen to my podcast on your favorite podcast app like Spotify and iTunes.